I want to do, before we take a break, I just want to ask one other thing. Um, you know, so the, we're, we're working the muscles here, right? These are the muscles that young people are looking for. You know, you remember when you're, you're a child, if you were brought to church as a child, and you knew, like, I don't want to be with any of those adults, not those adults, not those adults. But usually there was that one elderly woman who looked at you, usually had candy, and <laughs> sit there and was quiet and, you know, would, would be with you and, and, and liked you and enjoyed you, you know. They have detectors. We have detectors when we're children about who's present, who's, who's safe, who we can be with. And so this muscle we're working here of listening, of, of being transparent and vulnerable to who we are, this is the kind of presence adults, I mean, uh, young people look for, right? And you don't have to be cool, and you don't have to have the right clothes, and you don't have to know how Snapchat works or anything like that. When you're present and available and you have time and you're curious, kind of what we practiced here, this muscle is what we need to practice around young adults, um, young people. But let me just ask this last question. What was that... Um, if you were going to say a word that named what that sacred presence was like, and I'll just let you popcorn them and I'll write them down. What was that sacred presence like in your particular prayer or meditation? Connected. Okay, that presence is connected. Peaceful, quiet. Someone said safe and authentic. Reassuring. Gratitude. Gratefulness. Weighted. Mm -hmm. Bold. Bold. Here. Any other words that named it for you? Well, two that came to my mind when you first asked the question were alive and real. Alive and real. In touch. Freeing. Freeing. Love. What's that? Full. Full? Yeah. Okay. So, so, so this sacred presence that shows up in, in, in a lot of our experiences, right? It's, it's a presence that, that, that connects us. It, it makes us feel comforted, gives us a sense of peace. We feel safe when we're in this presence. We feel loved. There's a fullness, there's a freedom. Right, this, this presence is, is alive and real. It's, it's in touch, it reassures us. It brings up a sense of, of gratitude. All the grasping and longing sort of ceases and quiets. We feel that gratefulness. It, it, a, a deep dwelling of joy rises and, and hope. Right? This, this presence is, is sensual. It's weighted. We can feel this presence, the touch of this presence. It's, there's a boldness to it, but there's also a gentleness. It's caring. Right? It's warm. It's comforting. And it's real. It's not just something I'm conjuring. There's an aliveness, a reality to it, an authenticity that we feel, this presence, right? And this presence is the very, very, very same presence that Jesus knew. It's the very same presence. And we know this presence, just as Jesus did. 
This is the very presence that Jesus is, is trying to communicate through his touch, through his teaching, through the community he forms, through healing. And, and I know we could come up with another 35 words from these experiences, right? But this is the same presence. And so, so we all know God. And not only do all of us know God, every young person knows God. Created in the divine image, they know this experience. So that even when I was asked by the Jefferson Society, the Jefferson Society, their mission is to rid the world of religion and superstition. They're, it's an atheist group. But like churches, they're in decline. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so they, they needed, they decided maybe we should have a retreat to build up our, and figure, uh, and figure out what our mission is and how to, so they asked me to lead it. And they said, uh, please don't do any of your crazy God talk, but we don't know how to do a retreat and we need to connect and we know you use story, and could you help us do that? So I did this exercise with them as a way of getting in touch. Now we had to talk for about 45 minutes about what I meant by sacred. <laughs> but once we got past that, they had similar words, right? So they don't use the Christian language, does not communicate, but they know underneath that because God is generous, just like love, present to all human beings. We all get to know God. And, and every young person knows God. So our work, right, is to help mirror back to young people this holy presence that they know and that they get little whispers of experience, but that no one has told them they can s look for or listen for or perceive. Or no one has said, sometimes, you know, you catch a young person moving in the current of God. Their, through, through their own kindness, through their own generous acts, through their own creativity. And our job is to just help them feel that deeper, wider dimension of their experience. But every young person knows God, and, and all of us know God. The gift that we have in the Christian faith, right, is that we have a language, and we have practices, and we have ways we can deepen that, and, and grasp, and hold on to, and, and make ourselves available to that experience. Whereas uh, many people in the culture, don't, they just don't have a way of accessing that deeper sense of their, of their humanity, that sacred dimension. And that's a tragedy. You know, that's a very lonely, hard way to be, that it's just me. My life is just me and what I'm making of it. And my worth and everything depends on what I'm doing. There's nothing else. And if I suffer, it's my own fault. And I have to somehow prove my self-worth. Salvation is up to me and everything I do. Whereas when you know this presence is here, right, in all of our experience, I can surrender. I can trust what Christianity teaches us, which is our own efforts will never save us. <laughs> Though I keep trying. And I have lots of good ideas. But they all fail, right? And I can fall back into the everlasting arms. You know, I can fall, I can trust this presence, which I know I'm not separate from. Yes, yeah, so now we know this is here, so how, what do we do? Yes, first thing, we got to take time, right? Jesus would be fired from most ministries because he doesn't do enough. <laughs> right? I, you know what I mean? I mean, I, I know he gave three years to the ministry, okay. <laughs> <laughs> no. He also was always going off and retreating. He was, yeah, but he spent most of that time, right, off to the mountains, over to the lake, withdrawing by himself. He doesn't even write anything himself, right? He lets other people write it. Beca no well, no fun. Yeah, well, but Jesus recognized that he had to spend time dwelling with the Father. He had to spend time dwelling in that presence. That, that that's where, that source, staying sourced and connected, that's where the power is. Then there's, there's the authority, right? I, he, Jesus knows God. Jesus doesn't believe in God. <laughs> it's not like a trusting, I hope this is right. And, and that knowing is he tends it, he cultivates, he cultivates, he allows it to move through his body, to, to touch the broken, hurting parts of himself, you know. And then there's that it, it's an overflowing of that truth. But then he has to go back. Almost immediately, he's got to go back and 
dwell here again because it's hard being in, in this world. Yeah, and we have to do the same. We're no different. 